Good evening. My name is Bill Elgar and I am the PSHE lead at George Salter Academy. PSHE, as you can see from the slide, stands for Personal, Social, Health and Economic Education. And we believe these are as important to the young people at this academy as any of the academic subjects. But it is a triangle, the teaching of this particular subject involving the student, the parents and the academy. And we really want to work with you to make sure your child can grow up a safe and secure member of society. This is actually the formal consultation on the relationship and sex education programme that is being introduced, which is compulsory from this year, although some schools around the country are delaying it to early next year. We're introducing it now. So, strange times, I'm having to do this online. We would have normally invited parents in, but you will see my email constantly at the bottom of this presentation. Please feel free to get in touch with anything that is concerning you. Our vision. By the time they leave year 11, our students will be uh, able to make informed decisions with regard to their own health, including sexual health and personal well-being whilst having regard for the well-being and rights of others. That's what we're aiming for. PSHE at George Salter covers a whole range of things. As you can see from the slide, it's delivered by tutors, all of whom receive training and updates. It is delivered in a 50-minute weekly lesson. All materials have been vetted and all lessons have been planned by a team of staff. The standard of lesson that the staff are delivering will be as high as for any of the other academic subjects in the school. There is a clear curriculum map showing the coverage across each year group and these will be available shortly on the website alongside the other curriculum maps. The post-16 PSHE has been completely replanned and revamped following extensive student voice and it's been rebranded as Liftoff to increase its relevance to the students. All lessons have been audited to ensure we cover all aspects of relationships and sex education, health education, which is also statutory, as well as safeguarding standards, citizenship, careers. We deliver all aspects of PSHE on an age-appropriate spiral. I'll talk more about the spiral in just a few seconds. All students will have a folder for PSHE where their work and assessment information will be kept. We will report each year on the progress your child is making in PSHE and tutors will be available to talk you through this progress in parents' evenings when they return. Let's hope that's soon. We will quality assure the teaching of PSHE lessons in exactly the same way as we do with all other subjects. And finally, we will involve your child in the whole process. We will have student voice and we will look at where we could do things better both in lessons and how we can improve our processes across the school to make sure these important milestones that students reach in terms of their personal development are handled as smoothly as they possibly can be. Behind me now, you see the overall view of PSHE across the five years up to year 11. I talked about a spiral a short while ago. So for instance, if we have a look at year seven, your child will also have arrived and have been taught about the standards that we expect at George Salter how we work here, how best that they are going to achieve here. They will, through the course of the year, do things like, have a look at that uh, period just in January, a whole section on self-esteem, puberty and health and hygiene. So that is the beginning of the health and RSE work that they will undergo. But we revisit that in year eight and do a far more detailed piece of work on puberty. Um, so in other words, that's the spiral. We're building up as you go through the year groups. And prior to delivering that section on puberty, we will be conducting a student voice with students 
uh, about the best way to actually help them through that. Girls who've actually experienced that issue within school will be consulted and we will look to make any improvements necessary. So that's the overall view of what we do in terms of PSHE. What we have to do, this is what the government tell us that we have to do from September 2020, although as I said, some schools have delayed until early next year. All schools must be delivering RSE, Relationships and Sex Education, and Health Education. Lots of new content not previously in PSHE programmes of study will be included. There's still a right to withdraw, and I will talk to you more later on about that. All schools must have an up-to-date policy, as is up-to-date and is on the website. There's a strong emphasis on parental engagement communication, hence this and other opportunities that we will look to give you later on. PSHE shouldn't be in isolation, it's about the whole school, so it links to our tutor programme, but it also links to PE, computing, science, and we incorporate citizenship within the PSHE. Assessment and, and reporting is an expectation. The Department for Education guidance talks about relationships and sex, sex education building on the teaching at primary. So we have looked at the programme at primary and we are building on that. And your child's school will cover content on what healthy and unhealthy relationships look like, what makes a good friend, colleague and successful marriage or a committed relationship. And at the appropriate time, the focus will move to developing intimate relationships, to equipping your child with the knowledge they need to make safe, informed and healthy choices as they progress through adult life. The definition of RSE is, as you can see from the slide, a programme designed to give young people the information they need to help them develop healthy, nurturing relationships of all kinds, not just intimate relationships. It should enable them to know what a healthy relationship looks like and what makes a good friend, a good colleague and a successful marriage or other type of committed relationship. It should also cover contraception, developing intimate relationships and resisting pressure to have sex and not applying pressure. It should teach what is acceptable and unacceptable behaviour in relationships and this will help pupils understand the positive effects that good relationships have on their mental well-being, identify when relationships are not right and understand how such situations can be managed. So how can we help you? Well, this is what the DfE is saying to you as parents. The important lessons you teach your child about healthy relationships, looking after themselves and staying safe are respected and valued under this new curriculum. Teaching at school will complement and reinforce the lessons you teach your child as they grow up. In other words, nothing we do is secretive. We know how tricky it is raising young people. I'm a parent myself and I can vouch for that. Your child's school, just referring back to the PowerPoint again, is required to consult with you when developing and renewing their policies on relationships, sex and health education. This is what we are doing now. These policies must be published online and be available to anybody free of charge. And then also from the Department for Education, talking about health education. Health education aims to give your child the information they need to make good decisions about their health and well-being, to recognise issues in themselves and others, and to seek support as early as possible when issues arise. So it's back to that triangle again, with us working with you and your child to maximise their chance of successfully nav navigating these important few years, both in terms of their relationships and in terms of their health, and of course, in terms of their mental health.
it couldn't be more important now than ever before. Okay. On the screen now are coming up a, uh, are coming up a series of top tips. Now, my wife would laugh if she saw me presenting on these top tips because I can't claim to be any better parent than anybody who is watching this. These are ones that have been put together by experts and to be honest with you, some of them I wish I had had access to when I was raising our two children because they would have helped. So I'm not attempting to be patronizing. This is done with the spirit of working together. No one has all the solutions. Okay, this also links to another piece of information that we're gonna put online. There's gonna be a series of documents that we're gonna put online, and this one links to the talk the talk tip sheet. Anyway, going through these different tips. Don't wait for your child to ask about relationships and sex. Raise it when appropriate. My word, my wife would laugh at that one. I was very bad at that. But that's one of the tips. Second one, always tell your child the truth in words and at a level that they can understand. Don't fob them off. Third one, check out, check out that your child, uh, that, sorry. Ready? Check out that your children have understood what you've talked about. Ask them questions and let them ask you questions. Fourth one, never tell them off or laugh at them. Don't get angry and don't think that they are doing things just because they ask you questions. So in our training, we've talked to staff about the sort of blunt question that you might get asked in an RSE lesson. And they are prepared for those sorts of questions they will have set guidelines with the class about what is acceptable in terms of class discussions. They will also have boxes for confidential questions that the student wants to ask at the end of the lesson. We're all in this together. Fifth question, ask your children what their views are about things and let them know, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Fifth point, Ask your children what their views are about things and let them have their own opinions. Listen to them, don't lecture them. Remember, these are top tips put together by experts elsewhere. I'm not claiming that I was an expert in doing these things. It's great, six one, it's great to give them books and leaflets, but always follow this up with conversation. Seventh, and this is hard, believe me, I've been there, Try not to get embarrassed, but if you do, wait until you're at home together to talk it through. Eighth, if you don't know something, be honest and say you don't. We've told our teachers that. The world is moving at an incredible pace. They might get asked questions they don't know the answer to. We've told them to be honest. We've told them also to look things up and to seek advice from people within the school. Ninth one, stay calm and be understanding, supportive and relaxed. And that again is exactly the sort of things that we are saying to our uh, teachers in school. And the 10th one, children want their parents to talk with them. Don't leave it all up to the school. So we're gonna do our level best, but it is that triangle. I keep coming back to that triangle. Okay, if we go on to the next slide, this is what I'm talking about in terms of the spiral. So there's a, a section taken from the year seven curriculum map. That is from January 21, next year. So you see there's a lesson on self-esteem. You can see the objectives for that. What, a couple on puberty, one on personal hygiene, one on dental health, and then one on FGM. Because FGM is an issue in this country and it is about that age that it becomes a major issue, okay? So, FGM, by the way, female genital mutilation. If we then go on to year 11, we can see how when we're at an age appropriate st uh, stage, we can investigate those things further. So by year 11, 15, 16, we're looking at what is a healthy and what is an unhealthy relationship. 
how students, male and female, manage unwanted attention, the issue of domestic violence, the issue of honour-based violence, forced marriage, challenging gender stereotypes. Okay, so that's an example of a spiral and there are plenty more. As I say, these curriculum maps will be up when the rest of the curriculum maps are put online. Next slide. How are we working with you as parents? Well, we will report back on can-do statements. And I'll talk you through that in a bit. And that will be on their reports for the first time. So you're gonna get an explicit PSHE report from this year onwards. There will still be a behavior for learning grade, which will be included on reports. There's a letter on the Academy website explaining the curriculum and right to withdraw procedure. That has been there for a while now. Policy and curriculum overviews are on the Academy website and I've referred to that a few times, as are the curriculum maps. So if we go on to the next slide, there's an example of can-do statements for a year seven scheme of work, okay? So this is from the first scheme of work that year seven have done. So those stu students who are just about getting things will be at the working towards. I can identify transitional stages in my life and discuss ways of manage th managing them. I can suggest some ways to promote my health. I can state basic differences between safe and unsafe choices for my health and well-being. Those who are getting it at a deeper level will be working at. I can manage transitions between important stages in my life, demonstrating a positive mindset in the face of change. And you can see the others at working at. And then those who are really thriving in terms of their learning will be at working beyond. I can preempt and prepare myself for transitional phases in my life. So they're not just learning from moving from year six to year seven, they're actually preparing themselves for that, some of those big changes that happen throughout school life and indeed adult life. So you can see that we're starting to measure the progress students get. So we will report the outcomes for those in the reports that we send home to you on an annual basis. Also, we will do the behaviour for learning information as per the rest of the school, okay? There's just a couple of things that are said in addition to that on that slide. So if you just, so there's those two things. So we're really looking for engagement. PSHE is less about writing than most of the subjects. It's about oracy. Hence the importance of a, a, an agreement with the class about what is acceptable standards. So you won't necessarily see as much writing in the PSHE folders as in other subjects. That's not to say that the students haven't been fully engaged and we will record that in the behavior for learning information. If we go on to the next slide, these are just some things that I've put on the PowerPoint which you might be thinking are important. So they are links. And if you click on them, it will give you detailed information about each, okay? Rather than me going uh, into great depth about those, I thought it might be easy if I just put those links on. Okay, and finally, this is the thing that we must communicate with, with you, okay? This is really important. This is straight from the Department for Education. You cannot withdraw your child from health education or the relationships education element of relationships and sex education because it is important that all children receive this content covering, covering topics such as friendships and how to stay safe. So you cannot withdraw your child from that. If you do not want your child to take part in some or all of the sex education le lessons delivered at secondary, you can ask that they are withdrawn. Now the letter specifying that is on the website and there is a process for that at this school, which pretty much follows what the DfE is saying. 
Your child's head teacher will consider this request and discuss it with you and will grant this in all but exceptional circumstances up until three school terms before your child turns 16. At this age, your child can choose to receive sex education if they would like to, and the school should arrange for your child to receive this teaching in one of these three terms, unless there are exceptional circumstances. And the final point on that slide, the science curriculum in all maintained schools also includes content on human development, including reproduction, which there is no right to withdraw from. I thought it was important to end with that slide, but that really isn't the final message that I want to give you. So in addition to what we've given you, we've put all of those guides into an area on the website where the link to this presentation will also be. Please feel free to have a really good look at them. There is some really excellent material in there. It is definitely worth a read. And in all honesty, I seriously would have benefited hugely as a parent myself from reading these before my kids got to the ripe old age of 27 and 23. Hopefully, we're building a relationship. Hopefully, it's a relationship of trust. We're working together in this triangle. All of us want the best for your child. We want them to grow up safe and mature and able to make good judgments about what a good relationship is and how to manage their health, including their mental health. I can honestly assure you that the PSHE lessons have been carefully planned. The RSE element of those involved a number of teachers given a huge amount of their time to go through resources to make them as age appropriate and as clear as they possibly can be. And those same teachers are going to be involved in further training of our staff at the appropriate time so that the delivery can be as sensitive and as professional as we can po possibly manage. We are doing our level best to make this an experience which is really gonna benefit your child. And we hope that by working with you, we can make this a success. As I said, my email is at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions whatsoever. Thank you very much for watching this evening and I will be in further contact as we come out of this COVID period.